Hey everyone, how's it going? Welcome to another video. Today I'm gonna to be talking about some of the things I've been buying over the last couple of months. I took some time off from YouTube, as you could obviously tell. I spent a month back home in Switzerland, enjoyed time with family and friends. Did some selling in Switzerland, it went really well. Very excited about how that all went. Uh, with the profits, uh, well with some of the profits, I bought some new inventory, which I will show in today's video. I bought some things for the personal collection, which I will also show. And uh, yeah, let's just get right into it. So the first thing I bought was a Latios EX half deck. So this comes from the ADV gift box or gift set. It comes with a Latios EX deck and a Latios EX deck. I bought this half and uh, I didn't actually buy it for the Latios EX that you can see right here. I actually bought it to get a couple of non hollows that, uh, well, they're not in here anymore, uh, but you can see some of the other, some of the other cards. Um, I needed a couple of the non hollows from this particular deck to complete a collection goal. A lot of my purchases have been going towards completing that collection goal because it's been going on for a long time and I finally wanted to finish it. And I can report that it is finished finally. And I will show that in a future video. So stay tuned for that, it's gonna be exciting. But uh, I got a really good price for this. And I think, um, well, actually for less than this stuff goes for in Japan. So I believe I will be able to sell the Latios EX in Japan and make back my money. So that's always nice. I can get to get to keep those non hollows for free, essentially. So that's one of the things I bought. Uh, then I bought, I guess, I guess you could call it inventory. I mean, yeah, it is. But I've bought a few of the uh, uh, German Marnie milk carton promos. I got a few of them in card savers. Not that they are necessarily great, but it's just how I how I stored the stuff when I took it back to Japan. You know, kind of wanted to have it protected in the suitcase, and it's just what I had on hand. Um, yeah, about two sealed blister promos, as you can see here, all the cards. Uh, my, I don't know. <laughs> my thinking with these is that I might be able, oops, sorry about that. I might be able to sell them in Japan for a little bit of a profit. At least I'll try and do that. I've tried selling foreign cards in Japan before. It didn't go so well. Having that said, they weren't Marnies. Um, so. Obviously, there are a lot of Marnie collectors in Japan. These cards in Japanese are crazy expensive. And there might just be some people out there in Japan who collect Marnie cards that wouldn't mind having, you know, some German versions of these cards in their collection. So we'll see how it goes. Uh, again, these are so affordable back in Europe. Uh, it's just there's no real risk here. And it's just going to be fun trying this out. Uh, by the way, I hope the autofocus is okay. I had some issues with my phone the last time I recorded. If you watch my PSA return video, I actually, well, the last one, the last video on this channel, I actually recorded that back in July. And you can maybe tell towards the end, it gets like a little bit laggy. Uh, yeah, my phone doesn't like making videos anymore for some reason. So I'm recording on my DSLR now, which, um, you know, it's an older one from 2015, 2014, actually. So the autofocus is not the best. It's okay, but I'm trying to work with it. Anyways, moving on. So Obsidian Flames came out while I was in Switzerland. Obviously, everyone will know. Uh, I bought an ETB. And here are kind of the cards I took back to Japan. So uh, obviously the promo, way OC. I pulled a Poppy, which is kind of neat. And then I had like a crazy pack. In one pack, I pulled the Charizard EX and the Gold Charizard EX. So both from the same pack, which was pretty wild. Uh, but yeah, the card is, as you can obviously tell, it's pretty off-center and it has whitening on like like all four corners so not gradable but still had a lot of fun opening the set and honestly uh i don't really understand why obsidian flame gets all this hate i think it is a cool set i think it's it has some decent cards yeah it's like charizard heavy and that's like the only hit card is the charizard like alt art uh, but there are some pretty like decent cards like cool artwork okay then some non-pokemon uh, I'll get through this quickly because I know people here are people are here for Pokemon cards, but I've always wanted to open some of the 25th anniversary products, so I bought two of the smaller boxes and one LOB booster box, opened them up, took the hits with me to Japan. I left most of the cards in Switzerland, like the quarter century uh, promo, um, those kind of cards I left there, but I, I took some of the hits with me to Japan just in case I wanted to get them graded. I'm not sure yet if I'm going to do it or not, but... Pull the Trihorn Dragon, pull the Jinzo, nice foiling here. Pull the Nexodia, and then a left arm of Forbidden One or Exodia. 
All right, so here we get into some, uh, let's do some inventory. So like I said, I was selling in Switzerland and it went really well. Like it far exceeded my expectations. I had, I had a number in mind of what I kind of wanted to make, like a goal, and I went above that, which was fantastic. And by the way, if you are curious and interested in like a sales breakdown video, uh, I could extract all the data from the website the auction site that I sold on and give you all the information, like what did I sell, what sold well, what didn't do so well, et cetera, et cetera. Like if you're interested in that type of video, I can do that. Um, in short though, what went really well were uh, old back Japanese hollows and, and very new cards, like most recent sets, 151 did really well. What didn't do so well were slaps. I mean, they did okay. Um, I had, I had one really good sale that then I had like towards the end, I auctioned off a bunch because I just wanted to, you know, sell them. And in that auction, I had a few that did all right, that a few that disappointed a little bit. Overall, it was okay. Um, what surprised me though, was how little interest there was in modern Japanese sets that are a little bit older, like VCR Universe, VMAX Climax, there was like no interest, uh, partially because there are a lot of other people selling those same cards. So. Yeah, but it's, it was interesting. It was definitely a learning experience of what did well. Overall, again, it went really well, uh, especially the old back hollow. So again, I took some of the profits and stocked up on inventory. Um, so I got a, a lot here of these uh, e-reader non-hollows. Um, I actually bought this lot for that same collection goal I talked about earlier, trying to complete it. And these are just the leftovers. So I'll just use these as inventory. Then I picked up a few of these. You might have already seen them before, but these are the um, Lucario release promos. So these are uh, from, oh, what's the name of the Japanese set? Something with rainbow and battle. I think in English it's Burning Shadows uh, with the crazy Charizard, but this is the release promo. You can see the set name uh, down here. Uh, I found these for a good deal in Japan. I saw what single cards, like individual cards were selling for on Merikari, and I found these on like a sort of a little bit unknown card shop online for like half the price. So I figured I'd just buy a few. <laughs> I'm not sure yet what I'm gonna do with these. These are not necessarily inventory for Switzerland, but maybe I'll find a couple gradable ones. Maybe I'll sell them individually on Merikari. Maybe I'll just put them in a box for a few years and see what happens. <laughs> Could be interesting. You know, Lucario is interesting. Everyone always talks about how popular Lucario is, but you don't see a lot of people like grading Lucario cards. It's kind of funny. So mm, maybe slightly underrated Pokemon, who knows? I don't know. But yeah, uh, so pick these up and just kind of still haven't quite figured that out yet what I'm gonna do with these. All right, then I got a few uh, vending series cards. Um, again, this is inventory, just some stuff I bought online uh, you know, kind of good deals I found. So I picked up an Abra and two of the Mewtwo's. The Mewtwo of also being the one, let's see if we can get the focus here on this card. Uh, come on, yeah, you can kind of see there on the thigh, it has like a number printed on it and some other stuff below. So this is like an error version. I believe the error version is actually more common, but one of the things I learned was you put error in the title, people are interested. So. Uh, and of course, popular Pokemon, unique Japanese set. Uh, this is good stuff. Um, all right, let's get into the old back hollows. So like I said earlier, my old back hollows did extremely well. I couldn't believe it. I mean, part of it was because I got them essentially for free <laughs> so many years ago. I would buy like in 2015, 2016, I would buy Mandarake mystery cubes back when they were good. And you'd pay like 10 bucks and you'd get like 20 hollows. Uh, of course, they were all played in played condition, but I mean, they were so cheap. And so of course, even a dollar would have been profit. But I was surprised how much some of the cards went for even in like heavily played condition. So I picked up a few more. Uh, so yeah, what was important? Does the card look nice from the front? Is it a popular Pokemon? That was like the most important thing are the most important things. So I got a Mewtwo and Alakazam or a couple of Alakazams from different sets. Again, just interesting, cool inventory for the future. Picked up this Mew, this one's pretty beat up, but again, <laughs> what I paid for this card, I think it will do well. Nice swirl. Uh, oh yeah, swirls did well. So I focused a little bit on swirls with these cards when I picked them up, as you can tell. 
on these cards. And then as far as like the back surface condition goes, um, whitening mattered the most. What didn't matter as much was like kind of slight wear and tear. I'll show that, maybe demonstrate it on a future card uh, or an upcoming card. But yeah, old back hollows did extremely well. Um, people always talk about how, oh, vintage, there's no interest in vintage anymore. Well, that was not the case in Switzerland. Uh, to give you an example, um, this Dark Dragonite. Um, it has, you know, a little bit of a corner issue. It has some, some silvering. It has a few scratches. And then on the back... I'm not going to condition check all of these cards, but this is just an example. There's a little bit of whitening on the edges, like nothing crazy. Overall, again, you look at it from the front, it looks like a pretty presentable card, would look good in a binder, has a six swirl, popular Pokemon, popular set on the back. It looks acceptable. Um, I sold this card in heavily played condition. I mean, it was so scratched, it was crazy. And, you know, I was, I'm being an honest seller. I was being an honest seller, I showed good pictures, showing pictures what was wrong with, showing people pictures of what was wrong with the cards. And it sold for 25 Swiss francs, so about 28 US dollars. I had no clue that card was worth that much. Uh, maybe that's only the case in Switzerland. Maybe on eBay it wouldn't do as well, or actually I'm pretty sure it wouldn't do as well on eBay, but that's why I'm so confident in these. So even though I bought these now for, you know, the current market price, again, all, all of these I made sure had like a, you know, good price for their condition. Uh, it's a bit more risky because I have a bit more money invested in these again now, but if they sell only half as well as what stuff sold for this summer, I'll be just fine. So, man, and I gotta say, it's been so much fun picking up played old back hollows. For so long, I've been, you know, f trying to find cards to grade, and it was so refreshing just buying cards in played condition, you know, various played condition from like uh, lightly played to heavily played, uh, and just not worrying too much. Just looking at the price, does it look nice or does it look acceptable, and buying it. So that was a lot of fun. But of course, nothing is guaranteed. You never know. Next time I go there, things might not sell well at all. Who knows? All right, next up, I actually went to a card shop to pick up some inventory. Now, that's usually not a good idea because most of the time, cards you see in card shops, you can usually find for a better deal uh, online but I was just kind of bored, hadn't been to a card shop in Japan for a while, and the focus is struggling, and just, you know, wanted to see what's out there, doing a bit of research. So I picked up the, I think it's Jasmine's Raichu, but the Versus Series Raichu, uh, you can see the price that I paid. It's a bit of a slight corner issue and some minor whitening overall. Uh, you know, this is not in that bad condition. Yellow sticker usually means damaged. That can mean a whole variety of different things. You always have to inspect the cards. But this is, again, like I said earlier, like popular Pokemon, uh, you know, presentable card, looks fairly clean. And uh, yeah, Japanese exclusive as well. So I guess I could summarize and say that the stuff that did well was the stuff that people on that auction site don't see every day, which is why I think that VSTAR Universe and VMAX Climax singles didn't do well because so many other people are selling those in Switzerland. Whereas no one was selling, like I didn't sell this one, but I sold the Mrs. Tears. I was the only person selling a Mrs. Tears on that auction site. Or maybe there was like a buy it now or something, but you know, uh, things that people don't see every day do well. And obviously this being Japanese exclusive, or I guess both of these, you know, this is the kind of stuff that I was looking for. All right, so uh, yeah, Sabrina's Gaze, again, you can see what I paid. This one has a white sticker, so it's in better condition. It's actually, uh, this would probably be like a PSA 8, was my guess. Uh, this price, you know, I think it's okay. Uh, I think at the very least I will make back my money on this card. If you're wondering why I'm holding the cards in this weird way, it's because of the autofocus. I'm trying to get it to focus on the camera, not the Pokemon in the background. But yeah, um, then I picked up uh, this really awesome Dark Typhlosion. You can see the price. You can do the conversion if you want to. Uh, I picked this up as inventory, but also I've never actually owned this card. And so I get to own it until I sell it, which is kind of neat. I think this is a very cool artwork, you know, Neo Destiny being a set that's a little bit harder to find. There are not that many, or not as many Neo Destiny Hollows singles out there. Uh, popular Pokemon, it looks nice from the front. Again, it's not a perfect card, but it has no whitening. You know, that's what I'm focusing on. Uh, you can see it has a couple scratches on the back. You can see something here, some, you know, some wear and tear on the back. This is not a, yeah, you can see down there. You know, this would probably get like a seven is my guess. Um, 
I learned that people didn't really care too much about this kind of stuff. Like I always showed this in pictures. They don't, didn't really care too much about this kind of stuff. Whitening mattered more. So this card having no whitening and looking pretty damn good from the front. Again, I think this will do really well despite me paying, you know, uh, 1,350 yen, which is, you know, not cheap, I would say for this card in this condition, but it, I think it's a fair price. It's also kind of funny. Oh, uh, like you can see like these cards, there's like multiple stickers, like multiple layers of stickers. There's like three or four different stickers here. So they keep discounting them until someone purchases them. And you can see with the Dark Typhlosion, for example, uh, it used to be, let's see if we can get it to show. It used to be like 1,700 and something yen. And now it was this much. And I, I have a suspicion that the prices on the back, the old prices were maybe the Pokemon World's prices while all the Pokemon tourists were in Japan. I'd imagine the card shops marked up their cards during that time and now they're discounting them again to sell them. <laughs> maybe. Okay. Picked up a Houndor. Um, I'm taking a bit more time with these just because I got them from the card shop and I figured people might be interested what you can get in card shops. I actually think these are decent deals, but I spent a lot of time looking at cards and only picking out the best ones. But again, a decent price for this card. This again, similar here, no whitening, probably about a PSA 8 condition because of like back surface scuffing. But another one of those that I think will do well in auction. Pick up this guy, a black and white Mewtwo EX full art for only 430 yen, which is like three bucks. Super cheap for a black and white era full art. Now, of course it is this cheap because it has a lot of wear on the back. So this one has a lot of whitening. But this is such an awesome card. I mean, black and white era full arts, they go crazy. Look at this Mewtwo. Um, and three bucks is such a good price, even in this condition. And again, most importantly, like I said earlier, what I paid attention to, the card actually looks very nice from the front. Like it looks very clean from the front. That's what mattered the most. Um, yeah, so we'll see how this goes <laughs> next time I sell there, but definitely happy with this pickup. Uh, you know, I made sure it doesn't have any bends, any creases, any folds. I had a point of reference. I sold a Regigigas deck Mewtwo level X that had not this much whitening, but it that had significant whitening and I sold that for like 40 bucks. So, you know, if that serves as a point of reference, then I think this black and white Mewtwo full art is going to do just fine. Um, I played the vending machine mystery box game. I put in 500 yen. I actually won a prize, the B tier prize. Uh, I could pick from a few different cards. They had some VMAX Climax male full art trainers. They had a couple of uh, full art Pokemon like a Raichu and this one. So I picked this one because it's the most unique one out of the ones I saw as a prize. It was worth the 500 yen gamble, I would say. Again, another one of those cards that I think will do really well. Japanese exclusive, cool holo pattern, two popular Pokemon. Uh, what else do you want? This is like uh, lightly played to near mint, I would say. But yeah. So this was not necessarily like a this was like a random pickup because I played that mystery mystery vending machine thingy. Okay, then I picked up this card. Uh, you may be wondering, <laughs> what's this card? Well, it's actually this one. It's in a card saver. Boom. It's a base set Charizard. I never thought I'd be buying this card again. Um, I paid, you can see, 9,389 yen for it. I saw this card in the showcase. It looked very clean from the front. I saw this price tag and I thought, wait a second, that is way too cheap for this card. Come on, focus, you can do it, there you go. I figured that is way too cheap for this card. It looked so clean from the front, so I inspected it. The back has no whitening. Um, it has one little scratch, like right there, you can see, you can kind of see it. it has like two or three scuff marks. Um, it has maybe like a couple specks of like a little bit of dirt. Um, I couldn't get off. It has one microscopic spot in the top where like the hollow is, is oh, that's not going to focus, is it? Where like the hollow is coming through the surface, like microscopic spot. It does have a print line, but that's no one's fault. That's just how the card came. It's like right here. But overall, this is a pretty damn clean card. And um, for this price, uh, for this price, that makes absolutely no sense whatsoever. Like this card in this condition should be three times as expensive in raw condition. Um, that's a little bit of a half a swirl down here. <laughs> like this is, this card looks nice. Um, my PSA 7 that I graded 
looks way worse than this card. Um, like has a lot more back surface issues and a bit of whitening. So this is a clean card and I bought it initially, you know, I, I inspected it to, again, as inventory to sell raw because I figured it was such a good deal. But then when I inspected it, it was so clean. They're like, you know what? I'm just gonna get it graded, see how it goes. Now, here's the catch, okay? Here's, here's the thing. Um, this is the top loader it came in. You can see the price, you can see on the bottom here, it says, uh, you know, Kida Rizadon, so Hollow, the Charizard, and this is the thing though. It had this attached to the sleeve. Uh, this is Japanese, obviously, and it says Shiji Ari, which means roughly translated, there are instructions, some sort of instructions. I've never seen this before in a card shop. When I inspected the card, I asked the guy that was standing next to me. He explained something in Japanese and I couldn't quite understand him while I was inspecting the card, but it looked so good that I just, I bought it anyways. So I still don't know what these instructions are supposed to be. Uh, I wasn't giving any instructions when I bought the card, maybe when he explained it, but the way he explained it, he just kind of explained what, you know, he just explained what shiji, uh, sorry, he just explained what this word in Japanese means, shiji, right? So I have no clue. Uh, I inspected this card for a good amount of time. Uh, I even took my black light to it and my loop, which I never do because I figured or I thought, you know, maybe the instructions mean that potentially someone like colored the edges to hide whitening. Maybe that's what instructions means. Maybe that's why it looks so clean. I couldn't find anything of that sort. Again, my black light didn't show anything. The edges look perfectly clean and white. This is a pretty damn clean Charizard, and for this price, this is insane. Um, I have no clue how this happened. Makes no sense. But I got it, it's pretty cool. Um, I'll grade it, we'll see what it gets. Um, again, I have a PSA 7 that I graded earlier or before that have has a lot more back surface issues, a little bit of whitening, very minor, but a little bit of whitening. Um, so this one is, in my opinion, in better condition. Uh, so it might get a PSA 8, or I think it has a chance at a PSA 8, but I'm kind of preparing myself for a 7 because of this scratch. Uh, who knows? I don't know. But yeah, maybe a 7, maybe an 8. Even if it gets a 7, though, it's still way too cheap. And that's weird. Like, I need to point out how odd this is. Like, this never happens. You never find uh, cards in Japanese card shops that are three to five to maybe more times underpriced. That never happens, especially if it's a base set Charizard. It makes no sense whatsoever. It must have something to do with these instructions. I couldn't find anything in that card and I inspected it thoroughly. So maybe there's still something that I missed and we'll see when I get it back from grading, but that's gonna be interesting. Okay, then I picked up, uh, I was still on the inventory. I picked up uh, 20 of the uh, Scarlet and Violet event organizer promo packs. Um, I've shown the Sword and Shield event organizer promo packs before on the channel in my sealed collection video. And so I bought, I saw these for a really good price, picked them up. Uh, I like these a lot. I like this event organizer stamp or logo. I think the cards inside are <laughs> not most, the most exciting cards, a little bit lame, but they still have the cool stamp. And you know, Pokemon 2023 in a world where everything is printed into the ground, <laughs> it's nice to find something that is at least a little bit rarer. There's still a lot of these out there, still a lot more of these out there than, um, than you know, the older event organizer promos. But these are rarer than any set cards. These are rarer than any, you know, regular sealed promo card. So I like these a lot and these are gonna be slow sellers in Switzerland, I'm sure about that, but the margin in these is pretty good, uh, or good enough, and I like selling unique stuff, like I said earlier, and I think people wouldn't mind paying a little bit to pick these up for their seal collection just because these are such a unique item you just don't see all the time. Okay, let's end it with some cards for the collection that I picked up just uh, recently. So I got the, I got the Nine Tails, Art rare, I think this is a great artwork. I got the Scizor art rare, another fantastic card. Beautiful, beautiful card. I picked up uh, this uh, black and white Garchomp deck, uh, Gyarados Hollow, a reverse hollow. 
Crazy holo pattern. I recently graded the Houndoom of a different deck with this holo pattern with PSA coming up in my next PSA return video, so stay tuned for that. Shout out to Trainer TI who calls this Gyarados the Shrimp Gyarados because it kind of looks like a shrimp. You can't unsee it, I agree. Um, but yeah, picked it up for the holo pattern for the collection. Uh, yeah, Absol EX full art, Tyranitar EX, um, you know, full art SR. Pretty neat cards. I like them. And I picked up, I'll take it out of the top loader. I picked up the SAR. Uh, Ice Cune EX SAR. You know, I, I remember in that video I made a, a while ago there, I said I wouldn't be showing off any more modern cards. I think Obsidian Flames and Ruler of the Black Flame is so hated on that I actually have no issue showing these cards. <laughs> and I like the set. I think these are cool cards. You know, this, it's Ice Cune, not a popular Pokemon. Um, but I think it's it's interesting. It's a bit of a different card. It's unique. It stands out. It's quirky. Uh, you know, I think it's a cute Pokemon, and it's just so cheap right now. Th these lesser popular SARs are just so bloody cheap, considering how hard they are to pull. You know, that doesn't mean I think they will go up in value. I, I really don't know. I don't expect these to go up in value, but you can just get like hard to pull cards for like very affordable prices right now. Okay, and then the last card of the video, I think that's it, yep. I picked up this for a personal collection. So this is the um, Not Awake Hopip promo. Well, in English people always say Not Awake, but it's actually, well, it comes from Japanese and in Japanese it's Natawake. So Pokemon ni Natawake is what the title or the promo set is called or series, Pokemon ni Natawake. Uh, it even says down here. Let's see if I have to look past the camera. Pokemon Cardo books, Pokemon Cardo ni nata wake omake kado. So yeah, it's from the Pokemon uh, card books or something. Something along those lines. Anyways, that's the hop uh, Most people will know the birthday Pikachu is from the same set. Um, this one is very popular, not because of the hop but because of the Gengar, as you've already seen. Very cool promo, you know, exclusive Japanese promo from back in the day and it's in like a pretty acceptable condition. It has like one small minor, minor indent up here in the top. Uh, so perfect for the binder. And uh, yeah, beautiful card, cool promo, always wanted this one. And again, took the profits or paid it with the profits from my sales in Switzerland or with some of the profits. So completely house money here on this card or on, on all of this stuff, which just feels great. So yeah. Anyways, thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. Let me know if you're interested in that sales breakdown, if you wanna see exactly what every single item went for that I sold in Switzerland. Um, I can do that. I can create a Google Sheets file with all the data and go through it if you are interested. I don't know if people are interested in that kind of stuff, but yeah. These are the cards I picked up, some personal collections, some inventory, um, surprisingly something to grade, which I didn't expect. And we'll just see how it goes. You know, I can't wait to grade that card. It's gonna be exciting. But yeah, thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video and I'll catch you in the next one. Bye-bye.